This is an unassuming looking Dell Dimension 4600. This is actually my parents' machine. It's, oh, 15 years old, easily. My dad doesn't understand the, the fact that computers aren't supposed to last this long. Uh, he understands that one day it will crap out, but he doesn't understand that a new machine won't uh, last that long. The fun part is it's in remarkably good condition. Besides being a bit dusty and some cobwebs and shit, this has been powered on for 15 years. There's no blown or bulging caps. Everything is just factory. Everything is factory, except for the power supply, which I had to replace. So he had, I think the supply was like 30 or $35 and I gotta put a battery in it. The CMOS battery is dead. So I got some replacements there, so that's 50 cents. So it's like $35.50 in total repair costs, not counting the time that I put into it. Uh, but I wanna get this blown out. So I got my air, and we're gonna give it a blow job. Ooh. So I'll continue with this and come back after. Yeah, it leaks. This hose is, I don't know how old. Oh, it stopped. Wonderful. All right, it's had its blow job. It's satisfied and uh, a couple little cobwebs here and there that the air for some reason didn't get out, which was odd. This is a Pentium 4, 2.8 gigahertz, came with 512 mega RAM, added another 2 gig, so it's got 2.5 gig, and ah, maybe an 80 gig hard drive or something. Uh, there's a lot of crap hiding in here, where I didn't see. Interesting. Anyways, it needs a battery. That much I know, that's original. It's a Maxell. Let me see if I can come this way. Just get it out without a tool. Yep, there we are. It's a new sun. Absolutely shiny. I'm not even going to bother measuring it because the system is complaining that it's dead. So let me get a new one out of the package and pop that in. Apparently, these have millennial stickers on them. Which says, watch your kid, not your phone. Don't let him swallow this. And we will put in the new Sunbeam battery. There we are. You can't see anything. But it's in. There we go. Alright, let's get it fired up. There is no smoke test required because this was just taken out of service. It's performing automatic ID configuration and doesn't seem to be liking it. So we'll wait and see what happens. There we are. Okay, perfect. It actually worked. So we'll set the date and time. Uh, it's not SATA, it is IDE, so that is correct. I know it's a CD-ROM device. I think one's a burner and one's... I don't even fucking remember. 2.5 gig. CPU is 2.8. Hyper-threading disabled. That should be enabled. Anyway, I'm going to go through these options and uh, get everything set up. And uh, we'll get it booted up. All right. All the options have been set. This has a CD-ROM and CD-RW drive. Bio 
BIOS for Vision A12. I wonder if there was a newer one. Going to need XP for that. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if I even want to bother with it. Uh, it's got XP. It came factory with XP. I reloaded XP on it five or six years ago. Probably more like six now. This is when I got the new bar stools. There's an old video of that. That's their cat. And all the stuff. Everything is fully functional. The machine works perfectly. There's not a damn thing wrong with it, except it's running Windows XP. So we're going to change that. And we're going to put Windows 7 on it. But first, we're going to run some diagnostics just to make sure, because you never do know. Anyway, everything is all backed up. I don't know what the hell that's about. <laughs> Whatever. You know, like I said, it's getting reloaded. So let's get the diagnostics disk in and see what's going on. All right, we're all set to boot the diagnostics. Let's see if this drive still works. Spins up. It looks like it's reading and we're in. Beautiful. So we'll get into that. Alright, let's give the CPU test a whirl. Obviously that passed. We'll skip over to motherboard and run that. And we're going to skip right over to hard disks, bypassing the memory for a minute. Average read performance of 47.59 megabits, megabytes per second. I guess that was par for the course back in those days. Seems awfully slow by today's standards. We're going to go over to the internal cache test and run that. Problems may show here if there's any. No problems here. And the smart test. Five operations have failed since manufacturer C8H. Where I used to work at Tiny Middle, that would have been grounds for a replacement hard drive and, of course, reloading the operating system, which would solve all of the other little problems like, I have viruses, and this program doesn't work, and blah, blah, blah. So, the drive is fine. <laughs> the drive is fine. Nothing to worry about. Everything's good. Let's go over to memory... And we will go to the cache memory. Everything looks good. This should look like a Pentium 4 graph and just go like that, which it's doing. I don't know what it means, but it makes it look like you know what you're doing. That's good. Test the video memory. And we're good. So we'll just test the main RAM, and I'll come back some year later when that's done. As expected, everything passed. So we'll take out the Toka Discos. We don't need that anymore. And I'll get my flash drive plugged in and try to put Windows 7 on it. Oh look, it looks like these were put on crooked from the factory too. That's pretty cool. All right, first try. I believe I have the right flash drive. We'll give it a three-finger salute. Interesting, cool sound from the CD-ROM drive. Well, that's going to go a little quicker than I wanted. So we'll reboot again. Nice sound, definitely. F12 for the boot menu. And USB flash device. Let's see if that'll work. Oh. So far, nothing. There he goes. Winders is loading files. And it's definitely running at USB 2. Because this would otherwise be really slow. 
still is kind of slow, which is odd, but let me let it boot up. Well, seems legit. We'll hit next. Hmm. No, I don't like it. Weird. Okay, let me see what's going on. Now, <laughs> of course, things went from bad to worse. I just rebooted it, and this is what I'm getting now. And that's really, really bizarre. I don't know why. Really, really strange. I don't think this is the case, but I'm going to disconnect the hard drive just to see. I believe it's the flash drive, and I'll re-image that. But let me get the hard drive disconnected, and we'll try it again. It was the flash drive. Something got fucked with it. I don't know. I tried booting this with the hard drive disconnected so many times, and it gave me an error. The hard drive is now disconnected. When the hard drive was disconnected, but the flash drive was still in, the machine would just lock up at post. Really, really bizarre, so I gotta re-image that drive. Okay, I have the flash drive re-imaged. I've left the hard drive disconnected, just for fun. And we'll see if it will now complete post. Before, it was just giving me that error that I showed before, and it was not even completing post. I actually had to remove the CMOS battery to make it forget everything. And now when I try to boot the flash drive, Ah, good. All right, let's see what happens this time. All right, we got a logo. Looks like we're in. Mouse moves. Oh, love that kind. Now, again, the hard drive still isn't connected, so it's going to balk at me and tell me no any drive found. But we'll just make sure we can get this far, and then I'll hook the hard drive back up. We are going to do Home Premium X86. We'll accept, next, custom, and again, no any drive found. So now we'll shut down, reconnect the hard drive, and try again. This thing is really acting strange. It's I think it borked my flash drive again. Just disconnected the hard drive one more time. And we'll tell it to boot from USPA. Oh wait, sorry, that's Jordanese. And it's probably going to give me a BCD error. Yep. Okay, great. So I got to reimage the flash drive again. Okay, done playing for today. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like. Make sure you hit subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.